I can feel it coming in the air tonight. Dude, fucking Boston Celtics game six tonight. That's what we're here to talk about and nothing else. What's going on? That's right. Celtics all day, all long. This uh, is the Celtics pregame show by Mike and Mish. You thought you were going to hear about Bare Knuckle. Forget it. Welcome to the Boston Celtics pregame show. Yay! Here in Boston, Massachusetts. <laughs> Dude, we're not talking Celtics. I'm repping the Celtics. I'm repping Boston because it's a fucking big night for us. But we're here to talk some fucking fighting, fight sports. And I'm excited about this, Mike. I'm on like three hours of sleep in the last three days. How are you? I'm doing great. I have a little bit more. I, I probably have about double that from last night. I slept for about six hours, I think. And that was for the entire week. So doing can all right. We, can we ban somebody from watching the show? Is that something we can do? Good mish. <laughs> <laughs> can you ban someone from watching the yeah, show? Who yeah, you yeah, yeah. Because you keep that fucking attitude up, Big Ben. And you're not going to be able to watch this show anymore. God damn it. You either <laughs> support Boston sports or you back the fuck off. My goddamn. Fight. Kyle's about to break the record for F-bombs in one show. He's already said it five times since we started. I think we're about one minute and 20 seconds in. All right. Sorry. Sorry about that, guys. Hey, it's been a long week. It's been a long two weeks. We have been training our asses off. But we are here to talk sports, talk fight sports with you guys. BKFC 26 is coming up. We got two fighters that are coming on the show. One's in the waiting room right now. He is fighting for the welterweight champion against Elvin Leon Brito, who we had on last night. His name is Luis Palomino, and he's coming on in just a second. Right after him, we're going to have one half of the co-main event, who's going to be fighting for the interim middleweight title, mm -hmm. recently vacated by... Tiago Alves. A little confusing. He, yeah, a little but, confusing. He vacated it, but it's an interim title. We'll talk about that with him. Franci uh, Francesco Ricci will be on right after Luis Palomino, but why don't we get right fucking to it, Mike? That's another F-bomb. <laughs> yeah. Blame it on the Army, goddammit. We're going to talk to Luis We've about We've been doing that. too much training. That's what it <laughs> is. <laughs> too much Army stuff. Here we go. Our man, one half of the main event, BKFC 26, Luis Baboon Palomino. What's up, brother? Good guys, what's good? How you doing? Oh man, yeah. we're always we're always doing good, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know we are. How are you? Good man, feeling good, feeling great, ready to go. Biggest fight in BKFC history coming right up. Last time we talked to you, you were going into another co-main event. This time your main event and in the same building you just fought at. Oh no, no, you main evented the last one. It was the one before <laughs> you co-main. Man. You're all over the freaking BKFC fight cards. We just lost them. What's going on here? There he is. There he is. Um, talk a little bit about this fight, man. Champ versus champ. You have an opportunity to make history. You're the number one pound for pound fighter in the world already. What is this going to do for your legacy, my friend? Oh, this is it right here, man. I mean, I had I had the opportunity to ask for a money fight that I believe I'm very well deserving of. You know, uh, 17 years in in the combat sports game and after you know becoming the pound for pound you know four title five title defenses today five title defenses undefeated by knuckle fighter um you know i had all the rights to go ahead and just you know step away and ask for a money fight but for me my legacy is everything you know 17 years into this into this fight life to me my legacy is more important than money so it's, it's huge man it's the biggest fight of my life what blows my mind about you is you, you kept saying it right there, 17 years in the game, 17 years in the game. You look better than ever right now. At 41 years old, you're shredded out of your mind. You got that eight-pack, 10-pack, whatever the hell that thing is. I mean, what is it, man? Like, do you, do, you, do you look as good as – I mean, do you feel as good as you look right now? Do you feel like you're at the top best you've ever I, felt? I definitely feel as good as I look, man. I mean, look, man, my mom – I don't know if your mom ever told you this, but my mom always says – you know, you are what you eat. You know what I mean? So, and I, I eat very healthy. Uh, my wife and I, we have a meal prep business called Balanced Life Bento. You know, I'm very big on nutrition. I'm very big on anything that has to do with recovering the body. Um, and we gotta, we have to take into consideration that I'm a late bloomer, man. I started out training to fight in MMA at the age of 26. You know what I mean? I didn't start lifting weights till I was 22. You know what I mean? So I started late. So I think that's that's one of the major you know uh, reasons why i've reached this age feeling this good and if you think about it in my mma career where did i take damage 
You know, like I lost fights due to decisions and being controlled by wrestlers. Like literally wrestlers taking me down, holding me down, like almost whispering in my ear, please don't hit me no more, don't get up. They wouldn't even ground and pound. So that just for the sake of me not getting back up. I mean, if, if you look at my fights, just engaging, 10 million views on YouTube. That's like the only fight that I can remember that I took some real damage, you know what I mean? Other than that, I was the one doing the damage. So, you know, to put all that experience and, and, and come into Big AFC now, I feel good, man. 41 years old, I feel great, I feel awesome. Could you ever, would, would you have ever imagined that at your age, if you told yourself at 20, like, hey, you are actually not going to be doing MMA, you're you're going to be a bare knuckle fighter and you're going to be the champion challenging for the, to be the first two weight champion in, in bare knuckle, like ever. <laughs> Man, I would have never believed that. You know, <laughs> there was no way in my right. Man, I, I faced some serious depression. Uh, you know, I had a, a MCL tear, then I had a 30 degree PCL tear. I'm fighting the Russians in Russia. You know, suffering. You know, split decision losses. You know, like, and you know, I started to hurt my record. I was in a four fight loose streak in MMA. Everything just going down. You know, separated from the eggs. My son, my mom, my my, my ex wife taking my son away, and blah blah blah. And, I was in some serious depression, man, serious depression. And I didn't expect, I didn't imagine something else coming out, but I knew in my heart that I wasn't done. I knew in my heart that fighting wasn't over. I didn't know what I was gonna do. I was trying to go into boxing, but nobody was winking an eye at me, man, you know, boxing. I'm 39 years old, trying to get a boxing fight. They're giving me guys that are like in their 20s, 20 and no, 20 something and no, 13 and no, 15 and no, and they'll say yes, and then two days later, be like, oh, no. When they were looking at my videos on YouTube, you know what I mean? Like, uh, you mean to tell me I'm gonna fight this? Nobody in boxing, zero fights in boxing, but he got knockout power. He fights like this in YouTube. Like, yeah, I'm not taking that chance. <laughs> you know, so I couldn't even get a boxing fight. If it wasn't for Dave Feldman's dream and vision to make, you know, BKFC and push it through the way that he did, you know, we wouldn't be here right now. I wouldn't be in the position that I am right now. So I'm extremely thankful for that, you know? It's really something, man, because like, just imagine that I, the way when you were just telling that story, I'm just like imagining you like seeking out boxing fights. Did you even know that bare knuckle was a thing yet? And then somebody probably just like hit your management or somebody hit you up and be like, oh, stop looking that direction. Look over here. Look over it, here. This yeah, I, I thing, started, man. I just started seeing it with, with the fight with Lobov and uh, what's his name? Jason uh, Knight. Yes. Yes. That's when I started like, catching on to it. And then it didn't it didn't come very real until I saw Jim Alex, to be very honest with you. You know, Jim Alex was an old training partner of mine. And I saw him tearing it up. And I was like, man, hold up, man. I can do this, you know? Like, you mean to tell me I can swing and nobody's gonna take me down? <laughs> and they have to deal with my hands? Yeah, let's do this, man, you know? So yeah, yeah. It, it was it was once I saw after Lobov and those big fights. Once I saw Jim Adams doing it too, it was, it was a big push and a big uh, belief that, yeah, I can get in there and do it myself, you know? So let's talk about your, your main event fight coming up, man. Let's talk about this. You guys fought once before. You won the first one. We saw you down in Hollywood, Florida. You guys had a little skirmish after your victory over at Martin Brown. But Elvin Brito, what are your thoughts on the development of Elvin Brito as a fighter from the first time you fought him to where he's at right now? And what are you expecting when you step into the ring on June 24th? Hey, look, man, Elvin Brito, you know, there's always going to be a talk back and forth from fighters, you know. End of the day, this is this is a high-level dude, man. Elvin, Elvin, look, he's not going to just go loose to me and go on a five-five win streak become a champion because he got lucky. You know, it's, right. it's just, that much luck doesn't run in the BKFC game, you know what I mean, in the bare-knuckle game. So um, he is a very crafty boxer. I, like I've always said, you know, I, I do believe that he's a very crafty and good boxer. Only thing is that that type of style that he has, it, it kind of like neutralizes like fights where like it just doesn't look at as exciting as it should be or as it could be. Um, has he improved? Yeah, I believe he's improved a little. But the biggest improvement that I see is what rubbed off from his training partner. Like, so depending on who you train with and who you surround yourself with, you start to absorb different things, you know, and and being around a juggernaut, you know, he's a, he's absorbed some of that aggression, which was needed because he's a very like tactical fighter, and you know he moves a lot, runs a lot, and we saw it in my fight, you know. Um, I think that that rubbed off on him. 
but he's still, you know, he's still that crafty fighter that he is. But like so much improvement like that, I don't, I don't see. I, I know I've improved a whole lot. I've improved a, a whole lot. You know, yeah. like I've, I've cleaned up a lot of my boxing, and I have a really good mix with the brawling and boxing. And the only thing that I can say that stands out for me is that he actually went and looked for a fight in his last fight when he captured that, the belt. And even then, it was still a split decision. Even then, it wasn't a unanimous win, you know, or a knockout. You know, even then, it still ended up in a split that could have gone either way. You know, Lionheart showed, showed some tremendous heart and skill in that fight. But the fact that he came out looking to fight is yeah. the difference between the old Rito that I fought and the Rito that I fought. Well, he faced me like that. That's the question, you know? Oof. So you're expecting a more aggressive Elvin. And I'm going to ask a question to you from somebody in the audience. And I think you might have just answered it a little bit, but Big Ben, I don't know if you you know Big Ben, but he's the biggest BKFC fan on the planet. He's at every single event. He says, uh, Elvin is a different fighter on a winning streak. What are your keys to victory? So if you're, you're expecting a, a more aggressive Elvin, what's your key to victory here? Yeah, so if, if he does come out, you know, more aggressive, um, he's going to go to sleep, you know. The keys to victory are the right timing, the right countering, the right attacks, and the right timing. You know, when it comes to, to fighting Elvin, he needs to make this – if he really wants to win this fight and retain that title, he needs to make this a dirty fight. Like, he needs to come out and really fight me and try to turn it into some sort of 50-50 chance where whoever lands, lands. Because if he comes trying to box me, we've already seen what happens. He's not going to outbox me. I've got him better. You know, I've definitely got him better. You know, he's not going to outbox me. So my keys to victory is my game plan, man. Just go in there, be myself, and I like to adapt to the situation. I don't, you know, everybody comes with a game plan and this and that. This is the game plan. You know, I, yes, we always, we always have a general game plan, but I think that what makes me different, what makes me stand out from everybody else is the way that I can adapt to the situation. So depending yeah. on what he's going to give me, depending on how he shows up, it's how I will react, and I'm very good to adapt. And so that's the key to victory. It's just being myself. There you go. When we talked to Elvin yesterday, um, he was saying that he he saw a lot of like what you're saying and people in your camp and stuff, and he feels as though you guys think that you're just going to run right through him. You're just going to run right over him, and it's going to be an easy night, and that's it. Never that. Never that, never that, never that. Look, man, at, at 41 years old comes experience. And with experience comes, you know, being realistic with yourself, you know. This is going to be a dogfight. He wants to remain being a champion. I want to be the new champion, you know. So I got to come out there and be ready for a war. That's what I'm ready for. Mm -hmm. Now, having said that, the type of power that I'm carrying right now, man, like I don't have to cut down to 155. Like I sacrifice breakfast for Ooh. most of my fighting career you know i wake up in the morning i have a huge breakfast i go train to come back i have a huge lunch i go to come back training and i have a huge dinner and i'm still waking up like 171 172 like you know what i mean like i'm as natural as i can be right now like my actual walk around weight ripped strong like my power is nasty i don't have to deplete myself i don't have to cut much weight so, you know, it's only a matter, of, a matter of touching him. You know, I don't think that I'm going to just run over him. I don't believe so. But I do believe that when I clip him, it's good night. He's going to go out. You know what I love the most about this main event is that, like, you two are, like, pioneers of this sport. Like, you, when you came in and you fought Elvin the first time, the sport was very young, and it still is very young. We're only entering the fifth year of, of existence here. Yeah. Two of and, which were COVID years and kind of right. Down, so. And like it is the, the you keep saying that like you got better, he got better, the sport got better since oh, the yeah. first the first time you guys fought to now. The fort has the, the sport itself has really become a different art form, and like you two are the top of the mountain, and it's like really like two of the best of the best that have been doing it since almost the beginning fucking going at it for a belt you have a chance to become the the champ champ it's re i love i love this this fight so much man it's really amazing. No, I, I completely agree with you i mean and you think about it like this 
Alvin Brito is what? The only person that I fought that didn't have a perfect record. Huh? Right. You know, I, I beat this dude. He didn't have a perfect record. Everybody else that I beat was undefeated after that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm right. powerful, powerful for a reason, you know? And now we're coming back to a new Alvin Brito. Now we're coming back to a five fight win streak Alvin Brito. Mm -hmm. A welterweight champion of a Brito, you know what I mean. So I think I, I've gotten a fair. Uh, I, I can say I can fairly say that I've gotten top top competition, as young as the sport is, and the way that we're going, you see the opposition getting stronger and stronger. You know what I mean. Your record is is fucking nuts. I got it pulled up right over here. Yeah. For for guy for for all you that are watching that haven't watched all his bare knuckle fights, it's Elvin Brito, Isaac Valley Flag, Jim Aylers, Tyler Goodjohn, Datwin, and Martin Brown. That is a murderer's row of bare knuckle <laughs> fighters yep. right there, and you were, you've made it through all of them. It's unbelievable. And I wanted to talk about one of your former uh, opponents, Tyler Goodjohn. Me, me and Mike were there for that fight, and and Tyler is a very skilled boxer. And you guys had a lot of animosity going into that fight, and now we go on Instagram and we see it's like. People, let me tell you about my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, how did that friendship, like, what, what the hell happened right there? Man? Yeah, this is this is a, a true Apollo Creed, Rocky Balboa story right here happening in your face, man. It's, it's really it. happening. And look, the animosity was real. Like, I did not like this dude, man. This guy came, ruined a moment that I had been waiting for for so many years. I had him fought in Miami for I don't know how many years. Now I come to defend my title in Miami. This asshole comes in and throws my moments, you know, takes the mic from my hand. Like, yeah, I didn't like the dude. You know, I didn't like him at all. And, and, and look, he had to do what he had to do to sell himself. He had to do what he had to do to, you know, put himself in a position for, for a title shot. And he got it. He did it. Now, when you have a man, like they say in, in, in the UK, right, come from across the pond, right, mm -hmm. and, and come alone, without a trainer, not even a friend, you know, come and quarantine in DR 15 days by himself, you know, come and challenge the champ in his house. The dude was in his corner. I remember he was walking out first and he has a picture in his hand and it's a little girl. And I'm like, what is he holding in his hand? I'm looking at it and it's a picture of, of a girl, of a little girl. And later on, I'll come to find out it's his daughter that he hasn't even been able to talk to in I don't know how many years. You know what I mean? So just imagine the level of emotion the man is going through, you know? He's alone all the way over here in the States. You know, he, he got some people that are working in his corner that are not really his trainers. You know, he's, he's literally by himself. He quarantined for 15 days all on his own. He's like pretty much doing everything on his own. And he brought, I don't know what you guys think, the hardest fight that I've had in BKFC. He never he, stopped moving forward. He, he never stopped moving. And he's the only one that's cut me. Bloody warrior. He, he, he really is. He's he, it, This dude is like, I, I landed, the stats said 22 shots he landed, and it says I landed 173 shots, bare knuckle punches in his face. This dude is smacking himself in the chest, walking forward. Like, it's unreal. you gotta respect that <laughs> shit, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, he made a fan out of me that day, and, you know, I said some words that I really meant from the heart, you know? Uh, I wanted him to make sure that he went home and he got some love from his home over there in, in England. And, uh, you know, we started going back and forth. And, and you know, my manager, Chris Navarro, Rafa Navarro, we were, you know, we, we, we were messing with him, you know, on social media. <laughs> like, we were messing with him every morning, you know. And, and the dude was, like, just taking it in and he would go back and forth. And, and we ended up showing a personality there that the persona that he was uh, showing to get the fight wasn't the real Tyler Goodchild. You know, the, the little outbreak that he had with, you know, going back and forth with, with Dave Feldman, it wasn't Tyler Goodjohn. It was an emotional Tyler Goodjohn that is fencing for himself. And that's when I reached out with him, you know, Ralph Navarro, and I reached out and told him, look, man, you need to stop, you know, stop what you're doing and you need proper representation because I was going down that road too. I had a little hiccup with Dave in the beginning, you know, and that's because I was representing myself. Look, we're fighters. And we're very passionate about what we do, you know. He was damn, he was damn near, David, he was ready to fight David Feldman, wasn't he? Wasn't yeah, he? Like, yeah, oh, yeah. He was, he was going back and forth. I told him, look, man, you know, those are, those are your emotions taking over you. You know what I mean? And this is business. End of the day, Dave Feldman is a, is a very smart businessman. But you don't want to go and fight with a boss, man. You know, that's not the way yeah. to go. You know what I'm saying? What you need to do is you need to zip it. You need to put in your work where you're the professional at. You're a professional boxer. <clears throat> you're a professional fighter. 
You need to do that and let the professional handle your management. And we signed them. That was the first signing that we did uh, in our company. You know, Ralph Navarro, Chris Navarro, we, we have our own company now, management company. And, and that was the first signing that we did. We took in uh, Tyler Goodjohn. And, and uh, I think it was the best signing that we've done so far. And he's turned out to be a hell of a dude, man. This guy, this is my brother now. Don't mess with Tyler. This is my brother. Look, my plan, and in a perfect world, you know, because I'm not the, you know, I'm not the boss of the organization. But in a perfect world, what I what I have in mind for him is, he's like a, a diamond in the rough. He hasn't had the proper camps, the proper training, the proper training partners. He hasn't had what I've had, you know. And I didn't have that in my MMA career either, you know. Now I have it today in bare knuckle because of my experience too. So together with my experience, with my mentoring um, and my trainers and the team that we put together, he will be the one that I will pass the torch to. As a matter of fact, I don't want to stop defending the belt at 155 until he gets a title shot. Wow. So if Dave Feldman wants to get me out of the 155 pound title and give somebody else a shot, then you got to give that person a shot against Tyler Goodjohn at some point in time. You know what I mean? Because I, I, I plan on going to 165, defending my title, and I'd rather stay at 165 because you never know. You never know, you know, that maybe if I hang around 165 long enough and I don't have to deplete myself to 55 again, then maybe, you know, if there's enough money being thrown at me, maybe we go for that third title. Maybe we go 175, depending on who's holding it, depending on how much money's being offered. You know, that, maybe we go that for that triple, that triple shot. That goes back to, that could very well be a thing that you guys could work out because I don't know if you remember an interview that we did with Mike Richmond when Mike Richmond was like one guy that I would really like to challenge myself with would be Luis Pal Palomino. Well, now, Mike Richmond could be very well the guy who fights the winner of Yuli and, and Frances Francesco Ricci for sure. Like, mm -hmm. it's, it's Mike Richmond versus whoever wins that. You know what? That could be something that works down the road. I wanted to bring up a couple of these, uh, these comments here. Uh, Bullfrog Actual says, one of the best things ever, respect earned in blood. And that is... For sure, a thousand percent. Yes. And then our boy, our boy Joe Miggs over there, the uh, the Godfather of BK interviews over there. That fight was like watching Balboa and Creed. You said it yourself. <laughs> yep. It was unbelievable. <laughs> and uh, and you know what? You you mentioned him like training by himself and being by himself. His first fight, right? So like nobody really knew who he was this side of the pond, and uh, his old manager asked if I can interview him. So I. I, I get him on here before we go live. <laughs> yeah. And uh and Tyler's in a bathtub in fucking Las Vegas. And he he gets on and we're like two minutes before going live and he's sitting there and like you could see his fucking junk hanging there in the tub. And I'm like, bro, <laughs> I'm like, dude, we go live very soon here. You're gonna need to reposition your phone. <laughs> I was like, oh, we're not going to be able to do this interview. He's like, oh, we're, my bad, mate, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so he did the was whole interview. Was he drinking interview. a Corona? Yeah, he's drinking a, a Corona in the tub, nice. butt-ass naked in the tub the entire interview. A lot of people had a lot of things to say about that. But he was by himself out there, too. Yes. And, and yes. he didn't He didn't have a corner, man. He ended up asking Lorenzo and Christine Faria and Christine to corner. And he yeah. got COVID. And, and he, he got, got COVID. COVID. And then, yeah. he, and then you said about his work ethic, when he got stuck in DR, he was still training on the beach. He was like, I remember him hurtling like fucking beach yeah. chairs and shit. And I'm like, this dude really wants it, man. And he really he doesn't does, have anybody does. with him. So that's very cool. Very cool story between the two of you guys. I wanted to ask you, non-fight related story. Mike and I, you know, we're in the army. How's your son doing? I mean, he's- Oh, he's, he's doing active. awesome, man. He's, he's, uh, he's already done with the basic training. Yeah, oh, yeah. Now he's yeah. Now he's moved on to the actual real training now. Uh, the AIT. Um, yeah, yeah. So right now, right now, I haven't heard from him in a little while. I'm not sure if he's allowed to talk or what's going on. Yeah. So I haven't heard from him in a little while, but I'm sure that when he gets a chance, he'll get, he'll get back to me. What Listen, was when, his, when, what was your job? I was gonna say. Uh, go ahead. Do you know what his again? MOS is? Say it again. Uh, what, what is his MOS? Uh, what is I his don't, job? I, to be very honest, I don't know exactly what it's called. Something about missile launching. He he scored really high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's probably he's a, a Patriot. He's one of those one of those techies, you know. <laughs> oh, maybe Patriot missile battery. Like yeah. we worked with Patriot like missile. Yeah, yeah Patriot yeah. missile guys overseas. That those are, yeah. You got to be a smart man to be on those things for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. He scored really high in the, in the testing. And you know, when, when you talk to him now that he's had a little time in the army, does he use the f word like a comma like I do? <laughs> 
Like a <laughs> he doesn't really curse much anymore. No. Oh, good for him. Maybe I mean, he didn't really gay to begin with, like like that, but yeah. he's a little more proper now. You can tell us uh, things have changed. <laughs> good for him, man. Good for him because I got to tell you, a lot of the younger soldiers that come through, they need they need some whipping in the shape. And if he's coming out of basic and AIT already squared away, then you got a good kid on your hand yeah. there for sure. And is your brother still in? No, my brother's my brother's already retired. You know, he, okay. he runs his own security firm now, security company international. He's doing great. He's doing awesome outstanding man nice ah uh, man well you know what we love the fact that you're getting this fight against uh against elvin you guys were meant to fight again when we saw you guys when that like you guys couldn't have cut a better promo yeah. you know what i mean at like, a front row seat i was like this close to you guys we were right there and it, it just happened like one foot in front of us <laughs> yeah, and it was, it was very organic and then like it was very organic and then elvin like turned away from you and i don't know if you saw because you left he cut like it like mike called it last night like a wwe promo yeah and he was like sold it i don't ask for nothing he asked for this ass whooping he's gonna get it <laughs> yeah he's gonna get it and he's like in every single camera saying he's gonna get it. he asked yeah. for this. he's gonna get it. oh man this is this is big we love it man and we've and, never seen him fired up like that before it's best when it comes out organic it's natural not his plan here this is the reality. This is the truth. The man was really butt hurt about me calling him my son. You my son. <laughs> yeah. I beat your ass. I whooped your ass. You know that in the gym, that's the talk. You get whooped by somebody, that's your son. You know, like yeah. George Masters out, my son. Just engaging my dad. Big deal. You know. <laughs> now, after June 24th, I'm gonna become his godfather. So. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of heat going into this one. Well, Mike and I will be there, and I'm gonna tell you right now. Um, me and him are on our two week annual training where we're on active duty orders for two weeks. Like, cause me and him are, are full time for the guard, but nice. we're really not active duty. So we're on these active duty orders and this event gets announced. And I'm like, Mike, I'm going to go sit down with the command, man. We got to get our yeah. fucking orders changed. I well, got to get both orders. events were during yeah. AT on yeah, the 11th so, and the 24th. Yeah. You're like, you got to be kidding me. Why are they both within these two weeks that we have to be on orders? Like, real. Yeah. So I, I went and sat down with the commander and I was like, listen, <laughs> Our orders are up on the 24th. There's an event on the 24th that Mike and I cannot miss. What what can you do about adjusting our orders to the left a little bit so we come off on like the 21st? He was like, I could do that for you. I was like, nice. Yeah. Yes. Yes, man. This one. The stars align. We will be there. And we're excited about this. We're going to ask you a couple speed round questions like we always do on this show. And then we're going to let you go back to whatever it is you're doing. Because I know you're probably at the gym still right now. <laughs> right? Are you at the gym right now? No, no, no. I'm, I'm back home already. You're back home? Okay. No, right. we're all that. Speed round with the champ, Luis ba Baboon Palomino. Here we go. Number one, if you could eat only three foods for the rest of your life, what would they be? Three foods. Ceviche, lomo saltado. And my famous bolognese pasta. Oh, what was the second? I don't know what the second. Time. What was the second one? I don't know what that is. What'd you the say? Second one is yeah. ceviche. Ceviche is a Peruvian dish. You know, I love what it ceviche. Is? I love ceviche. Yes. Lomo saltado is the second like biggest dish out of Peru, which is like steak with fries, and rice, sauce, onions, tomatoes, delicious. All right, and, all right. I love it. My lamb. I, I make a mean lamb bolognese pasta. You wouldn't believe it. You make it yourself. I make it myself. Oh, Wifey, okay. that's the cook over here, likes me doing the bolognese pasta, the <laughs> lamb bolognese pasta. Look at that. Champ Champ is a fucking jack of all trades. Here we go. <laughs> Number two. Number two, what's a song that you know every word to but would be embarrassed if people knew it? <laughs> that's a good one. You know, I'm horrible with that. I'm not going to lie to you. I, I don't think there is a song that I know every word to. I'm bad with songs. He's too big. I, I, don't, I don't even busy. remember the titles of songs. <laughs> so you got me on that one. Well, you know, uh, Mike's is Like a Prayer by Madonna. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. Number three. Here we go. Favorite movie of all time? Goodwill Hunting. Whoa, no shit. Yes. That's dude, surprising. I yeah. love, yeah. Um, dude, that's we're Boston people up here. Yes, so uh, Goodwill Hunting, man. That's, that's for me, that's it. The beginning of that movie, when they're in the car and Ben Affleck's brother's in the back seat, he's like, Chuck, double burger. Chuck, double burger. 
<laughs> Chuck, I had a double burger. That scene <laughs> is so fucking good. I know what the fuck you ordered. I was there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, you my God. Like, yeah. I love that whole movie, man. It's great. Yeah, I, I love, love that. that I've seen it a thousand times. I love it. Wow. I never would have expected that, and I appreciate <laughs> you for that even more. Here we go, number four. What fight on the BKFC 26 fight card oh, besides shit. your own are you looking forward to the most? Oh, man. Uni Monster and Mike Ritchie, man. Uh, yeah, man. That fight's going to be awesome. I mean, look, the fight with Yuli and Thiago, to me, um, on my book, is probably the baddest fight of BKFC history, man. That's, that fight was too sick, you know? <laughs> and, you know, you got to know that Yuli's coming with that hunger, too. And Richie's a long, linky, uncomfortable-ass, good-ass, bare knuckle boxer, man. So very interested in how that fight's going to go. Very interesting. Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. Good answer there. And last one for you, if you could pluck any fighter out of any organization in the world right now and fight them in the BKFC, who would it be? Justin Gagey. Bring him. Gagey, <laughs> that's Bring your answer on. forever. Justin forever. Gagey, bring him to bear note. Yes, no wrestling, buddy. No oh. threatening my legs, no threatening wrestling. Bring him. I mean, that would be... Uh, I feel like what? he would do it. I think he oh, would. Yeah, I, mean, he I, don't would. Know, I don't know him at all, but I'm just saying. You know, I think he, he would. Like the type and of dude he's that a would dog, do man. Just in case he's a dog, he would do it. Especially do like it. In, with the state of the BKFC and all these fighters that they're signing right now, on they're bringing in, they just keep blowing our mind every week with MVP, and now they're bringing in Greg Hardy. They they got Ben Rothwell, Mike Perry, <laughs> Jimmy Rivera. I don't see why. Justin Gage, he wouldn't take a oh, yeah. stroll over into the BKFC world at some point. We love it, man. Awesome answers. Great talking to you as always. June 24th, main event, possibility to become a champ champ. Uh, take a second, say a few last words, and we'll let you get out of here. Oh, man. Thank you guys for having me once again. And my sponsors, Top Gun, Cigarette Racing, FYI, Florida Gas International, 100 Injured, Divino Ceviche, everybody you see here in the back. Thank you all for supporting me, Young Tigers Foundation. And I'm the parade of my strength and conditioning coach for the workout spot, man. Thank you guys for having me. All right, man. Well, thank you. We'll see you down in uh, in Hollywood, Florida very soon. You got it, brother. Thank Talk you. Talk to you soon. Thank you for coming. Right. Take it All easy. Right. That's our guy right there, Luis Palomino. I swear to God, I, I really I, I really like both these guys in the main event. It's mm -hmm. going to be a hell of a fucking war against two gentlemen, man, for real. Oh, it's going to be so awesome. I mean, just watching those two guys get in each other's faces and then one push. I would I've been we've been talking about it for months. All they did was push one push, yelled at each other, and we're still talking about it. So just imagine what the fight's gonna be like. I know. I, I and like <laughs> we talked about last night with Elvin. Elvin's like the about the like anybody who's ever met him and like met him in person, he's the most even keeled he's super nice guy. Nicest like, fucking guy ever. Orlando. And, and, in Knucklemania when we first met him. Yeah, nicest guy ever. I don't think I've ever seen him fired up outside of a ring ever. No. That day, he was fired the fuck up. And, like, he was very ready. When we met him, we – so we went to Knucklemania on a whim, basically. Like, hey, let's just do this. And we went. We're interviewing Chris uh, Saro after – actually, first you – you interviewed Drew Lipton and then Chris mm -hmm. Saro. And right before Chris Saro, you guys are ready. We were set up. And that's when I met Scott Farley. I, he came over. I was talking to him. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, sorry, sir. I just got to get this uh, done. And he was like, yeah, whatever. And then after that, Elvin Brito sitting at the table. And you start talking to him. And you guys talk for like 25 minutes or more. And he was like, oh, we should get the camera over here and start talking. And he was the nicest guy. I was like, I don't know. I've never met this guy in my life. And he sits here and talks to us for this long. And he was awesome. And he's always been like that. Right. He really is. I mean, and and like, I, honestly, all those GOAT combat agency guys were kind of the same way that day. Like, yeah. Sorrow was cool as hell. I know a lot of people don't like Sorrow for whatever reason. I know. He rubs everybody the wrong way. But, I mean, he's never done anything wrong to us. And, and we met him in person a few times. And he was a cool guy. Uh, but Elvin and 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 Luis Palomino, what a fucking, what a gentleman for sure. He 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 always gives us his time, and uh, like a lot of fighters, um, we we communicate with them through Messenger and DM and stuff. And Luis was like one of those guys who was like, man, fuck all that shit. Just take my phone number and just hit me up. <laughs> I was yeah. Like, yeah, I can appreciate that, dude. I really like that. Um, 
Speaking of Chris Sorrow, Mike, he's on that card. I don't think we even talked about that, right? I, I don't think we really did. He is on the card. He's against, he's going against Townsell, who, if you guys remember, the last time Townsell fought was actually in Hollywood, Florida. But he fought Trujillo, which I feel like they kind of threw him to the wolves there because that guy's on the up and up. He should be probably fighting Lorenzo Hunt or someone at that, you know what I mean, oh, yeah. at that level. Not and to you know talk what? shit about Townsell, but I just – you know what I mean? Like he you did just throw this guy did to the okay. top talent. He did okay right up until he got knocked out cold. But he, yeah, that's why like, that's like, the story. We were like, we were like, holy shit, this guy's giving Gustavo a pretty decent fucking scrap right here, and then he got sent to the shadow realm. But you know what? Like you said, Gustavo is a different animal, man. So who yeah. knows? I, I bet you he puts on a, and I think he's training. Like he started training with Gustavo after it. So it's kind of like one of those. Uh, I don't know if they're buddies like um, like Tyler Goodjohn and, and Palomino are, but I saw Townsell post videos and like in uh, Instagram posts with him and, and Gustavo training together. So, you know, one of those things. I had a friend in high school that like I got in a fight with, and we beat the shit out of each other, and then like we became really good friends. It's kind of like the story, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh yeah. I I mean that's so so that's one great fight and it's a fight that i feel like is flying under the radar because there's a number mm -hmm. of good fights on this card and uh i just don't see a lot of people talking about the undercard of this because we have a main card that's stacked up i mean the top three fights on the card look like this so i <laughs> I think a lot of people look see this shit. and they think like, holy shit, look at this. I mean, the Diaz uh, Ricky fight, that could be a main event. The Rawlings Heart too, that could absolutely be a main event in it. And it was going to be. I mean, that is crazy right there. But the and then you got is, Jimmy Rivera and, and HD Davis. Jimmy right? Rivera is the fourth fight down on the card. It's unbelievable, man. I'm it's really a technical like, difficulty with the pitchers. Here we go. I don't know why the. There we go. There we go. I was trying to get this count to come up, but it wouldn't come up. Yeah, unreal. It's really un it's unbelievable, man. And uh, and then under like the the like the prelims got like rookie Randall on it, and he's like the biggest up and comer right now in that in the, in the uh, one twenty five division. Right. Uh, you got uh Brian Duran who fucking this guy. He's like, what, is he Hands of Stone? Is that his nickname, Hands of Stone? Uh, like? Yes, I think so. You know what I mean? Like, he he's a freaking beast, too. They're all Slaughterhouse guys. I, I don't know. I love this. I love this card so much, man, for sure. This is going to be one of the funnest fucking nights we've had so far. I'm looking forward to it. Oh, it's going to be absolutely fantastic. You know, there's another fight that was announced recently that we haven't really talked about at all. Who do we got? And it's in the female flyweight division oh i know what you're gonna bring up for the i know championship. somebody in there somebody in the comment section uh absolutely goes bonkers for this fight right oh now. yeah we know a little well there's a there's probably more than one Lamb, guys guys I feel like we all kind of knew about this but uh this <sighs> there it is it's it's like our boy joe miggs is in the comment section right now they had that they had that incident, the skirmish. That, that skirmish where uh, ta skirmish. Uh, Taylor, the killer bee, took the belt and Christine Faria tried to get it. I mean, it's like it was some it was some it was some WWE type stuff. But you got to love that kind of kind of stuff, because I believe that is what got this fight. So shout out to you, Mr. Miggs and uh, Christine and Taylor for getting that shit done. I love this fight, and it's in Albuquerque and uh, BKFC. I would love to go to that fight. <laughs> oh, I know, right? No, I don't. God. I've never been to New Mexico. I would Ooh. love to go see this, and you know, there might be. Look at look at Joe. What's I'm Joe? Spin, I'm spinning in my chair. <laughs> 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 I love it. Yeah, I mean, listen, you added to the hype of the fight, and it was a it's very amazing. widely shared, much watched video of them two going at it. And uh, you know, everybody wanted the fight. People have been talking about it. Howie, but Howie, the thing is, maybe we will, Howie. Maybe we will. Keep going, Mike. Sorry. Maybe we will. So people were talking about it, but the thing is, is talking about it only gets it to a certain level. You know, you when you put that out there like that and it gets sheared over and over and over again, it becomes that sort of like viral 
video that people watched, man, that that really did kind of take off. And a lot of people uh, saw that video and it really added to the hype of it. Her taking the belt. That's my belt. You know, cops coming over there, breaking it up. It, it was uh, it was they're, pretty, it was pretty and, cool. And they're going at it on, on social media, too. Did you see? Uh, I have uh, not. Christine posted a picture. She was like, somebody sent me this. And it is a picture of like, it's a Taylor Starling, like, ass Oh, pick. I did see that. And, yes. and on the wall behind her, it's like a picture of her, like, bent, like, up against the wall with her ass out. Yeah. And on the wall, it says, like, new champ or whatever. And she was like, everyone needs to stop sending me these pics. Because, you know, like, uh, you know, she's nothing to me or whatever. I'd rather. Oh, yeah. I would rather see her when I when I beat her or whatever. But there's another fight that they should add to that card. And we got our other our guest coming up in a second. But I think that they should throw a co-main on that. And I, I don't know if they already do. They probably already do. I haven't seen anything. Dude, else the co-main that. event in Albuquerque of Jenny Savage versus Andy Wynn would be fucking awesome. Have oh, yeah. Seen? Dude, this right here. That would Andy, be a good fight. 115. Andy Wynn yeah. at 115 pounds against Jenny Savage. Co-main. Make that a main event and co-main event. All women fucking co-main and main. That would be fucking awesome. I don't oh, know if you agree great. with that me on that. That 115-pound division, it, it should be taken off soon, I think. It should be. And last night when we had Britain, Hart, uh, Britain Beltran on last night, uh, she dropped that news on us. She was like, you know what? After this fight, instead of going for the winner of Taylor Starling and Christine Faria, I think I want to go down to the 115 and win that, win a, win a 115 mm -hmm. pound belt. I'll go down there. I'll beat whoever they need me to beat down there to get a belt at 115. And then I'll go back up to 125 and we'll do a little champ champ and see who the best, the best woman in the right. world is. And I love that, man. I love it. Yeah, me too. I love it. I love it all. I, I love this sport. I love everything about this. Mike. Sounds fantastic. Can't wait to Mike, see it. We got another guest in the in the weight room right now. He is waiting okay. patiently. He is one half of the co-main event, June 24th. He will be fighting okay. Yuli, the mobster Diaz, in the interim middleweight title fight. We will talk to Francesco about that, yeah, yeah. why it's an interim. But here he is, the 4-0, Francesco Ricci. What's up, brother? What's up, guys? What's up? Welcome. Are you to the filled show. up? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> What'd you guys eat? What'd you eat? So uh go to my parents' house, try to go every Thursdays. That's really like the best day where I'm not training at night. And uh this time we ate some uh, turkey broth and then just some roast, you know, nothing crazy. But normally my dad makes a seafood dish or spaghetti and clams and you know nice. There's always a surprise, thankfully. That's always a good my dad's night. Got her specialties, my mom has hers, so so well, your son, so your Sunday dinner takes place on Thursday. Pretty much, yeah. I work, you know, nonstop. Matter of fact, when I'm done here, I'm going back to the shop to work some more. So, wow. a lot of times, uh, you know, it's it's easier for me to go on a, a Thursday night or sometimes Sunday night, you know, depending. Well, dude, welcome to the show. We've done a few interviews with you in person at events, but we never actually had you on the show before. So welcome to the Mike and Miss Show, Mission Accomplished Podcast. Uh, we appreciate you coming on. We got to talk about your opportunity that you got coming up. Co-main event, Yuli Diaz, interim title for the middleweight title. Um, can you shed a little light on this subject for us and anybody who's tuning in? Why is it an interim title? Seeing how fight, seeing yeah. how Tiago Alves has has left and he has vacated the title, why are you fighting for an interim? I don't know. I mean, there's uh, any questions you guys want to ask, feel free to shoot, and I'll shed some light on everything because I know that the way that everything's kind of shaped up, you know, who came out and talked shit and then who came out and said what, it's it's all a, a pretty big twist, I guess. But um, I don't understand why this is a uh, interim title. Um, there was a really – uh, weird rat race going on between who was going to get Perry and who was fighting who. And at first it seemed like it was going to be me and Perry. And then all of a sudden it seemed like it was going to be Yuli and Perry. So then that's what prompted me to call out Richmond, which I, I didn't call out Richmond. I just told Nate, I'm like, if you guys want to make them fight um, and Tiago vacated, then the only logical fight in that case is me and Richmond fighting for the title. And then they came back and apparently his manager, Nate told me his manager said that he wasn't going to be able to make weight. So then 
they told me for sure that Perry was going to be fighting overseas. And they were trying to give me a name that I don't even remember. Um, I, I apologize. I'm drawing a fart here, but it's somebody that's not even ranked. And they wanted me and him to fight for the for the title. So I'm yeah. like, that doesn't make any sense. If Yuli's missing a dance partner, you know, why don't hmm. me and him fight for the title? And it was more out of respect, really, because me and Yuli are boys. So if, if I had it my way, I would rather fight Tiago. I would rather fight Perry. And, uh, you know, I would rather fight Richmond um, rather than Yuli. But at the same time, I also got to give him respect. You know, he's a good friend of mine. And I feel like if anybody deserves to fight for a title, it's him. You know, he came. He's very credentialed. He fought for the title once. He came up short, but he came back and won a fight since then. So, and on top of that, I mean, you could even not know shit about fighting, maybe not even speak English, and you would still tune in to watch. You know, this is a fight yeah, yeah. that, you know, no matter how you slice it, it's got fireworks all over it. Um, it's 150% not going to make it to a bell. So, um, I just figured, I'm like, listen, he sells out, I sell out, why don't, you know, me and him fight each other. So then that's when negotiations went underway. Why is it an interim title fight? I have no fucking idea. Apparently, <laughs> I, I apologize, by the way. I don't know if I'm allowed to curse or not. Yeah, go you ahead. can. Okay. But apparently it takes a while for, for them to strip people in BKFC because from what I heard when I spoke to Lombard last time that I spoke to him, and he told me that he was going to Eagle FC before he had his uh, debut with Eagle FC, um, he told me that he had already informed them that he had no plans of coming back, but he's still not stripped. You know, that 205-pound belt is still technically not vacant. So I don't know, man. I, I hope that that's not going to be case in middleweight but regardless of the fact this is a belt where everybody that was I, I never call anybody out you know whenever Nate comes to me he just gives me a name and I say yes or no you know and I've never said no so every every name that he's ever brought forth wasn't one that I suggested it was one that he brought to me and I've never ever denied anybody I've taken fights the day of I actually was was offered to fight uh somebody November 12th it was the day of and I said yes right away because I had x amount of tickets sold I actually came back from Italy short you know uh more rapidly than I was planning to just to get in somewhat of a decent camp to try to get another fight in that year. Cause I'm trying to stay active, you know, over the last couple of years, COVID, all the other bullshit that I've went through in my life, I haven't been able to fight as often as I wanted to. So I wanted to at least get another one in for 2021. And I've taken that last minute fight too. So I've, I've never been one to turn down fights, but I made sure that all the names that, that were at the very top, you know, the people that deserve to fight for a title, I, I made sure that it was, you know, me and Richmond, me and Yuli, like wh whoever the fuck that it could be. Because the original deal that we had on the table was whatever happens between Richmond and Rickles, depending how one of them wins, that's a title eliminator. If for whatever fucking reason one of them gets injured and they're out, you're fighting Tiago. If that's not the case, then you fight Perry. But I was pretty much uh, promised one or two of them, which I'm not, in, I'm not entitled, dude. I, I know my, where my stock's at. I know what I bring in. So I'm not the kind of guy that gets pissed off. I actually thought that they were going to make a fight between the two of them. So I wasn't surprised regardless of what direction they went in. But they approached me and they told me that, that those were their plans. So considering the fact that I wasn't fighting one of the two of them, you know, I just figured that at least it has to have uh, some kind of merit. You know, it needs to make sense for me. So that's why I, I ended up saying, listen, why don't me and Yuli dance then for the title? He's ranked number one. Right. You know? Yeah. So that's how I that I have a question about the unranked person. Was it Jomi Escobosa? No, 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 no. No. Hmm. No. Hmm. No, I would remember his name. I, I genuinely yeah. remember his name. So. so let me tell you something, man. I don't know if this event is completely sold out yet. I would be surprised if it's not with, with you, Yuli, Palomino, and then all the Slaughterhouse guys on this card. Oh, yeah. This thing has to be sold out and packed to the fucking rafters for this oh, event, yeah. right? I mean, I've got people. I've got other fighters. My buddy Blake, he's a good friend of mine, a training partner. Um, he was actually hitting me up because he couldn't get certain tickets because he sold out his tickets. I had sold out mine, too. So we we got to be very picky. Normally, you know, weeks off from the fight, if you've got, I don't know, like 20, 30 tickets more than what you had sold, you can always just kind of like rely that there's going to be some leftovers. I can't take that chance nowadays because I don't want to tell somebody, hey, listen, you know, I know that I sold you a ticket, but unfortunately there's none left. So um, from what I know, people are struggling to find tickets. So that's why people think that it's always a ploy to try to sell more where you say tickets are flying, tickets are selling out fast. Of course, it's something that people always say, but tickets really are selling out. And this like, time, people, for man, sure. Dude, you're going to fucking go to the Hard Rock, stand in the box office or hope for somebody <laughs> to, to, you know, want to be selling their ticket because they miraculously have an extra one. 
this not only is, a t is, is an event, obviously, where like all the stars are fighting, but at the same time, this also has the cheapest gate. I don't think we've ever had tickets that were this cheap. I mean, if $55 for general admission, I think it hasn't been this cheap since I made my debut with Bare Knuckle. Really? So that's what people don't understand, man. Tickets are flying because people actually want to go to this fucking event. So all those people that want to wait around and, and you know, get tickets the day of or get tickets the week of, which first of all is, is a bit of a pain in the ass just because fighters are dealing with other stuff like with media opportunity, press conference, weight cut, you know, which obviously is the most important one, depending on how much weight you got to cut. But you're dealing with all that shit, getting your shorts ready, getting your fight shirts out. And then people are sitting there hitting you up, trying to get tickets last minute. We're more than likely going to be out. And I'm not trying to deter yeah. people from reaching out to us to buy tickets, but I'm just saying, you know, um, don't don't be a sucker. You know, get one sooner rather than later. No, you got you guys got a couple of like kings of Florida down there on this car, not to mention yourself and the rest of those guys, but like, Put Yuli and Palomino on a card and then throw you on a card. And I believe all three of you were on a card together before. Um, oh, yeah. it's, unbe it's really unbelievable. And you just said $55, dude. That's a half a tank of gas nowadays, motherfuckers. Yep. And like, <laughs> <laughs> like you, my, uh, my truck, man, my work truck. I have a, a diesel excursion. Oh, and my God. 175 bucks and oh. barely over half. Oh my god, dude! Do you remember like diesel fuel used to be cheaper than gas back in? I used to have a diesel it's truck. Was, gasoline. I don't understand how fuck it's more expensive nowadays. It's it's unreal. And I was pump. I was putting gas in my in my truck the other day, and I looked at the price. It was like six twenty for fucking diesel. I was like, what the fuck? I've been yeah, I've been cool. I've been taking a ride chair. Sorry. Go ahead. No, 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 I, I apologize. It's it's a little delayed, so sometimes I start talking and then realize we were talking. I'm sorry. Oh, it's all good. I was going to say, I, I've been taking a rideshare van to work for years, right? And we didn't even know there was a cap on the card to for one pump. So the other day I'm pumping and it slows down at like 124.50 and it's going real slow. And then it stops and I'm like looking at it. And I'm like hitting the pump going, no way this is full already, right? So I, I put it on like, hey, it won't let me pump anymore. Fucking there's a cap. We reached the limit on the one on a pump. The card only allows you to go to 125 for the ride share yeah. van. We can't even fill our freaking tank up anymore because it's so expensive. Dude, I'll tell you what. The limit, because I, I use my business card all the time to fill up. You know, obviously, tax is a, is a, is a write-off. So, I mean, sorry, gas is a, is a deduction, tax deduction. So, I use my company card to fill up. I've used the same one to fill up now for years. And gas all the way up until, I want to say, six months ago, the cap on that card was 75. Then all of a sudden, it went to 100. Now, it's 125. So, Fuck you're right. Pretty soon it might even go up. I mean, actually, the other day I filled up the Wawa for one seventy five. So unreal. Reaching those limits at the fucking pump, you know, you don't want to be there making life decisions or having to pull out a gun to fucking commit <laughs> robbery at a gas. <laughs> it's crazy. Point. I'd much yeah. rather buy a ticket to uh, this fight on the, right. 20, on the 24th. Hey, you you mentioned Mike Perry and uh, and earlier in the in the comments here. I'm going to give Big Ben credit. He says, would you have rather, if they said you got this interim title, I, I don't know what he said. It was a while back. If they said, hey, you could fight Yuli Diaz for an interim title or you could fight Mike Perry, would you have taken the title fight or would you have taken the Perry fight? Probably Perry just to shut him up. Um, and also because I have bad intentions, obviously, with him. So, of course, you would rather fight somebody that you don't like. But, um, yeah, probably Perry to shut him up. This guy... I, I love the fact that he came into BKFC saying that I didn't want to fight him. And if they offered me enough money, I wouldn't fight him, um, which just goes to show his fucking character because I was the one that was begging for the fucking fight, like an ex-girlfriend pretty much, all the way up until I saw the fact that you just can't force somebody to fight. You know, even though we're fighters and a lot of people like to call us gladiators and we're fighters and this and that, you actually have a lot of pussies in the fight game, Mike Perry being one of them. Uh, top of the fact that he also admitted to me that he declined Kevin Lee because he didn't want to risk getting cut from the UFC, and then the shit had got cut anyways because he fucking sucks. But Mike Perry declined. Notice that the fight wasn't going to fucking happen. I just stopped calling him out because at the same time, I get it. You know, business is business, and then people are going to make their moves, and you're not going to sit there and force somebody to fight. And if you could make the same money for fighting somebody else that he's not afraid of, why not fight somebody else? But I just wanted to finally put an end to it because he said that he would beat my ass. He said that I was scared of him. He said that I wouldn't take the fight. And I feel like if people saw what I would do to him, you know, potentially they would even put me in jail after that fucking fight, after I molest him live on TV, people would realize, fuck, man, maybe Mike Perry was telling fucking bullshit or was telling a lie or was being a little dishonest about the whole fucking thing. So, like, then, you know, I can kind of, like, shed some light on what would actually happen. God forbid we were locked in the cage. But at the same time, um, 
right now, I'm not really like thinking too much about, you know, the whole Mike Perry situation because obviously I have a tall task in front of me with Yuli. But um, yeah, uh, I, I think I would have rather fight M Mike Perry. I, uh, I apologize. I would have rather fought Mike Perry just to try to uh, put an end to that chapter. Um, but, you know, I, I, I think it's a decision that, that my team has to be okay with. You know, as much as I like, I would love to fight Mike Perry and brutalize him and then make him walk like a penguin for the rest of his fucking life. <laughs> um, I think that it's a, it's a choice that my team has to make because I get it that I'm the one that's going in there. I'm the one that's, that's fighting, but it's not me. I, I get it that we're throwing my fists, but it's, it's my training partners, my coaches, you know, everybody behind. I don't have a manager, but everybody else that's, that's part of my team, that's part of my family. They're the ones that have a say in it, and a title is a lot more. Uh, it's a lot more of a credential. It's a bigger feather in your cap than beating up some moron that can't even fucking speak right. Has wow. this affected your business? Like, you know how when when people come out and they say shitty things, and then all of a sudden you start getting like the fan, like say his fans come up on Yelp and they start putting shitty things on Yelp and Google. Like, has that happened to you? Yeah. Not, not, not really uh, um, to the level that you would imagine, but just really on Instagram, you know, a bunch of fucking morons just sitting there asking me dumb shit. And then a couple of people, I, a couple of people just genuinely asked me questions and I fucking replied to them and they're like, oh, whoa, whoa, well, like I, that, okay, well, that makes sense actually. You know, you're right. If that's the case, then you did what you're supposed to do. And then other people are just fanboys. Like there was this one fucking idiot that actually had his picture on his profile picture and he's trying to discredit everything that we said. But at the same time, this isn't a debate that you can have. You, you can't be arbitrary with this shit over, you know, Instagram, you know, online. You're going to have some people that literally go on your page with the sole purpose of talking shit for my mm -hmm. page. And you're going to have some people that are my fans that maybe never even took their fucking car to me that go on, you know, the interview and just say, no, you know, Frank's an awesome guy and Frank this and Frank that. Maybe I'm an awesome guy, but maybe when it comes to working on cars, I suck. Same thing with fucking Perry. Maybe man, Mike Perry's an awesome fighter, but in real life, he sucks. You never, you never know. There's so many question marks. And until you can actually go to court, like this piece of shit never actually did that he said he did because I looked up in the fucking clerk of court. So did my lawyer. Didn't see shit. Um, so if you, if you were actually to take me to court, we were going to go to court. And we we're going to sit there and lay out the facts and show A, B, C, D, and E. Then all of a sudden people can kind of realize, hey, well, why was Mike Perry saying this? Why was this going on? Why was that going on? And then they can fucking realize, not, not understanding the, the fact that I, I'm, I'm as busy as I can be. I mean, I work over 100 hours a week. And even right now, like obviously up close to the fight, I still have to work those hours because I've got to get all the shit that I have inside my shop done. It doesn't matter what the fuck Mike Perry said because the people that I have, the majority of the work that I have is word of mouth. It's people that have worked on their cars and they've sent their friends and then they've sent their friends. And I work on pretty intricate shit. So me getting to the point where I was fed up with Mike Perry for fucking running his mouth and, uh, you know, uh, sending me that fucking demand letter from his attorney and me telling him fuck off and come pick up your shit, that didn't affect my business not one bit. And if it, you know, if, if anybody just goes, hey, you know what, I don't want to take your car because Mike Perry said that you're a bad guy. All right, I get it. You know, sure. Listen to the guy that fucking beat his wife to the point that she ran his mom's house to fucking call the cops. I'm not even trying to, to be honest with you, and, and I, I apologize for saying this, but I'm not even trying to get into the Mike Perry subject just because it, it's, it really sucks having your hands tied behind your back, seeing the person on TV talk shit about you because you can't do anything about it. There's the, right. the guy has a bigger platform than I do. I mean, he, I as much as, say that. yeah, as much as I don't respect him as a person, you know, he, he's fought his ass off. He, he went out there, he had fucking wars with Vicente Luque. He did what he did to get the fans that he has. So he's got a bigger platform than I do. So regardless of what I say, until I actually get to the point where, you know, the bridge that I'm crossing has Mike Perry's name on it, there's not really much that I can say because it's just constant back and forth. He's going to say this. I'm going to say that. Nobody really knows what the fuck happened. And on top of that, I'm also veering shine away from the fight between me and Yuli, which is a huge fucking fight for the both of us. So I definitely don't want to disrespect Yuli like that either. So I don't want to talk too much about the Mike Perry thing, but I feel like the majority of what I have in my chest, I got it off. But holy you know, shit. Down the line, here's the thing to close off on it, and I, I don't mean to, to, to ramble on here. Mike Perry was so fucking scared of me that he took the fight with MVP, which in London is suicide. I mean, I don't know if Abraham just hates Mike Perry at this point or what, but that's just fucking career suicide. You're not going to be MVP because while MVP isn't a, a phenom boxer, you know, he's not an, an, an A class boxer, he's a good fucking boxer, he's a really good fucking striker, he's very fast, he's got power, he's got precision. And Mike Perry can't move his head if he was on a fucking car. Like, he just, his head's stuck in place. So, like, what's going to happen in that fight? Nine times out of ten, MVP either knocks him out or at the very least wins the landslide decision. So why am I going to go and fight Mike Perry? After I win the title, 
I'm going to go, go and call out somebody that lost. That doesn't make any sense. So I just feel like the ship, in all honesty, has probably sailed. But we'll see. You never know what can happen. You know, maybe MVP could slip on a banana peel and Mike Perry could win the fucking fight. <laughs> Something happens. You know, maybe after that fight, he fucking comes back and wins the fight and then finally, like, works his way up the ranks. Maybe. But as far as I'm concerned, no, not really. I, I feel like when the smoke settles, when the dust clears, people are going to realize, you know, that that this is a this is a – this is a sport of bare knuckle, you know. This isn't a fucking court over what the fuck you're sitting there complaining and bitching about what happened over your fucking car that I took very good care of. I, I, I don't even know what to say. I don't think they have any choice at all but to book this fight. <laughs> Win, lose, or draw, doesn't matter what happens between the two of your fights, man. Holy shit. The animosity is real, and that, and that shit is no joke. And like you said... Like you said, a lot of people don't know, and like, no offense to you, a lot of people outside of the bare knuckle world don't know who you are. But a lot of people know who Mike Perry is because he has a gigantic platform and he could say whatever the fuck he wants about you and just tarnish your name. Exactly. And, and listen, in all honesty, I don't like when somebody new comes to, to any promotion. I don't give a fuck what promotion, promotion it is, you know, whether it's UFC, bare knuckle boxing. And people were just calling him out, trying to get that fight, or doing something slimy to try to get that fight. I, I don't see the point in it. Like, I, all in all, we're all fighters. Like, this business is fighting. You know, we're not uh, playing tennis. We're not playing basketball. Our skills are going to speak for themselves, regardless of what you do or say or how you act. You know, nine times out of ten, when you step in there, the skills and what you worked on in camp is going to show in the fight. If you can fight, great. If you can't fight, too bad. You might be in the wrong business. But it's, it's skills to pay the bills. Where I'm trying to get at with all this is I didn't call out Mike Perry because uh, I wanted to take his clout or take his exposure or build a name off myself. Fuck no, I would never do that because there's other people that came into this promotion. And God forbid I wanted to fight them because maybe one of their opponents pulled out. You know what I did? I phoned the matchmaker and I said, hey, I'm available. If you guys need somebody, I'm here. I did it when uh, multiple people. I don't want to you know, call their names out or anything because I don't want to try to seem like I'm, I'm out here putting everybody's name in my mouth. But that's, you know, I, I, I don't believe in that whole trying to go out there, start a brawl to get a fight or, or, or trying to get somebody else's name in your mouth. He's actually the one that called my name out when he came here. But funny enough, a couple weeks before that, which was before he fought for triad combat, before my fight pulled out in November, he was sitting there wishing me good luck on my fight by text. So he's the one that called me out. That's the reason why I kind of want to put an end to this chapter. It's, it's, it's really fucking annoying. You know, I've got many people, obviously, that I've, I've, I've done work for that go, dude, you know, anything you need, let us know. You know, we're going to, like, post pictures and do this and do that. And I'm like, great. But it doesn't affect me, really. It, what he says and what he does just doesn't fucking affect me. I mean, here's a guy that's got tattoo on his face that says fucking platinum that's calling me a crackhead. You know, some fucking, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, to me, it's fucking comical. Like, for Mike Perry to call anybody a crackhead's fucking comical, but let alone for him to say that about me where I don't do cocaine, I don't fucking smoke weed, I don't do shit. I really don't drink. I haven't drank in months. You know, I've had maybe a glass of beer and most. So all, all I do is literally work. And, you know, uh, I, I guess that that makes me a crackhead because all the fuck I do is work and I'm always sweaty and dirty from fucking working. But you know what? I'd rather be a crackhead like that any day than, than being the person that fucking beats shit girlfriend she runs away from him and hides it at home i think you or, i think you've, you've pretty much uh i think you've pretty much got it all out there man i i think everybody <laughs> i think everybody who's uh paying attention now gets a good idea of how real this animosity is and obviously that needs to be made let's uh let's let's uh bounce back to your fight on june 24th real quick yes. yuli and you uh, you, Yuli, Yuli has been so goddamn active in the combat sports world lately, just bare knuckle MMA, boxing, bare knuckle MMA. He's fucking all over the goddamn place. The dude's yeah. super active. He, everybody loves Yuli. He's on podcasts. He's hanging out with DJ Khaled on fucking yachts. That's your boy. He is obviously ultra talented and tough as they get. How do you see a fight with you and your boy Yuli Diaz going down for the interim title? Like, how do you even see this thing playing out? I just see it being fireworks, man. I, I'm not trying to sound cliche or corny, I'm trying to like promote it this way, but I, I know the way he fights. I don't know the mm -hmm. way I fight. We've both been hurt in fights and came back to win. And I just I don't see how this fight goes a distance. 
you know, both me and him hit hard. We both obviously I've dropped everybody I fought. So is he. Um, and I, I really don't see how this fight makes it a decision. You know, I, I feel like after this fight, you're going to know who the uh, who the best person at 185 is. Not not because somebody squeaked by with a decision. There's just not going to be any controversy. And regardless of the fact for those 10 minutes, of course, you know, we're we're in battle, but He's my boy. You know, I, I have no ill will towards Yuli. So, you know, what I said in, in my interview with Bare Knuckle a little while ago was I, I, I just hope that, you know, um, he doesn't get hurt in a fight, um, as I'm pretty sure that he probably wishes the same for me. But more than likely, the way that we fight, somebody will. So I, I just feel like you can expect us to fight each other as if, you know, he stole my girlfriend, for example. But... <laughs> It's uh, it's it's gonna be a good fight, and and I know that he trains his ass off. I've got a lot of respect for you. They got a lot of respect for what he's done. I got a lot of respect for what he's doing. He's a family man, um, you know, and he's not the the he's not a person that has to go out there and fucking try to diminish other people or fucking troll or try to talk shit about this person or that person or take sides. You know, he's a model human being, and you know he's. He's, he's I'm, glad, a, I'm glad you said that about Yuli because Yuli is one of the most intimidating looking people. We when me and Mike first met him, we met him at I think Knucklemania one. Yeah, and he's just like this stone, like stone dude. Like he, he uh, I shook he's his like hand. He's like a statue. Like, he's like a statue, and and you shake his hand, and it's like shaking a brick. Yeah. But when you shook his hand, he smiled, and he was like All the right. nicest fucking guy ever. Yeah, he was, he was yep. like. He was so nice and like, yeah, I can tell why everyone loves him, but also, um, I lost my train of thought. Shit. Go ahead, Mike. Go. Save me. <laughs> well, you were saying how nice Yuli is and he, he's like a statue. You start talking to the guy and is all of a sudden he breaks his, you know, instead of his stone cold look, all of a sudden he smiles and this awesome. You got that gold uh, too. Yeah, but he's he's got this great personality that comes out. He's very he's got a super. Yeah, he's charismatic. He he's got a superstar WWE wife. Like he like he. I said, know what I was gonna say. Go ahead, Kyle. You said 185 pounds, Frank. This is a 175 pound fight, right? Oh, I said one. I said 185. You said I'm 185. Sorry. Let's just clarify that. That's what I want. Like that was sticking in my head. You, I'm sorry. You said 185. Now this is 175. Yuli's last fight was up in weight against Sawyer DP, right? Yeah. That was a 185-pound fight, but I think they both weighed in around 195. Now, Yuli is one of those guys that can go from 175 to 205. Do you see that you have an advantage being more naturally a 175-er to 185-er than against Yuli because he does fluctuate all the way up to the 205 weight class and back down? Is that does do you see that as an advantage for yourself? That's what that's uh, what I want. I'm I guess I'm more natural to the weight class. I mean, I've made 170 a bunch of times for MMA, so yeah, I, that could be an advantage. But to be honest with you, man, he's uh he's a professional, so I know that he's gonna take the weight cut seriously. You know, I don't think that he's gonna struggle making weight at all, and I don't think he's gonna feel weird at the weight either. He obviously still packed power when he fought at 175, which is the biggest thing. That's the first thing to go when when fighters try to fight at a lower weight class. You saw it when Brimage went down to 135 in the UFC. When a lot of fighters try to like go down and wait, typically they like lose their power. Um, you know, same thing with Michael Johnson. He went down from uh, 155 to 145, and he kind of lost his pop too. So you, you see it. But I don't think that Yuli has that issue. I think that to be honest with you, he's more natural at 175. I mean, you've got guys like me. I'm 6'4". You've got Blake at 6'5". We're fighting at 175. I make weight pretty easily. I mean, I'm I'm big. Don't get me wrong. I'm not a small individual for that weight class, but my last fight, even though I had staph infection that week, my, my last fight, I only got back up to like 183, 182. Normally, I'll get back up like close to the 200 pound range, but I'm still not a very big dude for that weight class. And I think Yuli probably weighs right around the same as I do fight night. So I, I don't know if that'll be too big of a weight weight advantage. Um, if anything, the people at 175 are probably going to be a little smaller, so it might be easier for him to reach them because Yuli's typically at a reach and height disadvantage, except for when he fought Tiago. Now, your his last fight. Were you at? Were you were you there for that one? You might have even been on the fucking card. To be honest with you, when he fought yeah, Sawyer, yeah, fought he, right after. yeah, he fought. Yeah, he fought right after him. That's right. Yeah, he did. So, thought you did you go back and watch Yuli's fight against Sawyer? And what did you see in that fight? Did you see anything that like stuck out to you? Because I could tell you what 
Mike and I saw standing side. Uh, we thought this guy Sawyer DP was getting thrown to the wolves, right? We did. Like we, he's only fought once. He fought out in Montana or whatever it was, and we're like, oh, this Twice guy he was two and over, I think. Was it? Oh, he fought, but it's like he was taken on two weeks notice or a week yep. and a yeah, half notice. Days. 10 days notice mm -hmm. and we're like man this poor guy is about to fight an absolute monster his nickname is the monster and he dropped yuli like and we were like holy shit this dude might actually pull this off uh did you go back and watch that fight and ha have a opinion on that fight so um i actually watched that fight as a fan before i even got uh before i even was selected to fight yuli um, because I fought right after him, actually. I was literally yeah. the next fight. So a lot of the times when I go back on the Knuckle Mania app, because before they, like, made the actual videos of, you know, me versus Boswick, Yui versus DP, they had, like, the whole event on there for a couple of days. So what I would do is I would just go back and I would start at his event and then, you know, watch all the way up to mine. Um, and, yeah, I watched that fight a couple of times, man. I, I think uh, I think it, it, it threw Yui off. Maybe that, that, that Sawyer was... Uh, a southpaw and what i mean by threw him off is he started as, as a southpaw and i think that's where he got caught you know he kind of kept his right hand down and dp came straight down the pipe and caught him but I, I don't really think too much of it man because me and me and sawyer dp are two completely different fights and on top of that yeah dp took the fight on two weeks notice but so did yuli but whenever you get an opponent change for people that love the game plan yeah. which nine times out of ten you know you are game planning especially in a sport that's this brutal on this there's so much at risk you get a different opponent change, especially from an opponent like Melvin Gillard to Sawyer DP. You're you're taking the fight on two weeks' notice too. So it's not like yeah, you know, you were in camp, you were training, but fighters in general are always in the gym, are always in some kind of shape. Um, not that they're expecting to get called last minute, but it's not like Sawyer DP was completely out of shape. So I feel like uh, that's kind of what threw Yuli off. But to be honest with you, you know, he did what he had to do. He persevered and won. And I yeah, saw. I love that fight, man. DP's got balls on him because he fought, you know, he fought his ass off. But I saw his face after that fight, and I was like, damn, dude, this guy looked like yes. he got hit by a car. It's like, yes. holy shit. He was all cut up, yeah, for sure. Yeah, his, yeah, one side of his face was, like, really bad. Uh, the right side, I think. It was, like, just yeah, straight yeah. down his – yeah. I saw him. He was I was like, rough. Dude, was like, fuck, man. Like, you must hit pretty goddamn hard, you know, because that, that guy's face was pretty brutalized. So, But I, 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 I like watching the guy. I actually watched him fight uh, Quentin. You know, which I'm a huge fan of uh, Quentin Henry recently. You know, of course oh, he, yeah. didn't, he didn't get uh, he didn't get the the the, the uh, outcome that he wanted out of it, but he won right before that. You know, right in between him fighting Yuli and Quentin, so he's an exciting guy to watch fight too. That fight, I I didn't even realize this. Now watching the fight, it didn't even look like Henry got caught with anything, and this goes to show how fucking hard you know you guys hit and and how bare knuckle is so much different than boxing with gloves. You know. Because oh, yeah. you see Quentin, he, he was in the hospital. He had like a couple of fractures in his orbital. Oh, shit. And I was like, I didn't even know this guy got hit during the fight. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> he's in the hospital two days later because he had some pain. And he went to the hospital. He had a couple of fucking fractures. I was like, holy shit, what? So he got yeah. smashed in that fight and just barely even showed that it, he, yeah. he didn't even move. A lot of the times, man, yeah, like the, the smallest fucking punch will do a lot of damage. You know, look at, uh, look at, um, uh, when Cuban assassin fought the champ, when he fought uh, Lorenzo? fucking Lorenzo, Lorenzo Hunt, that was a very short, crisp right hand, like right on the right on the lip. And uh, of course, the lip was busted wide open. But you know, uh, Lorenzo was hurt. You know, in in this sport, I just feel like the slightest touch will be able to do enough damage to put somebody out, especially when you don't see the punch coming. Man, I'll tell you right now, this card that you're on. June 24th is fantastic. We are excited to see this fight for sure. Um, we could talk to you. I, I feel like, dude, we, we could talk to you for hours. You're, you're an easy interview. You, you got a lot to say, and I love it. And and thank you for getting everything off your chest with the Mike Perry thing. Because I oh, know not everything, but you know, let's not take <laughs> up too much time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what we do on the show is uh, we hit you with a few speed round questions before we get you out of here. And uh, we got five of them for you. Um Want to do it? Let's do it. Let's do it. Number one, speed round with Frank Ricky. Here we go. If you were to fight in the Coliseum, what would you wear for armor and what would you choose for a weapon? Spartan style. Yeah. Oh, definitely a sword. And in terms of armor, 
probably stainless steel if I can make it myself. Yeah. Would you wear one of those big masks that they used to wear? Like oh, maybe yeah. it looks like a lion or 100%. some shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nah, I love it, man. And and um, I got to tell you, when me and Mike were deployed in 2012, I was kind of hooked on that show. Um, Spartacus. Spartacus. I was hooked yes. on Spartacus. And while we were out there, there was a USO tour coming around and the whole cast of Spartacus came around and met all the troops. It was the so, weirdest thing ever. Cause good. every single person in our, in our friggin' unit, we were passing around like, Oh, did you see Spartacus? And we all traded all the friggin' DVDs yeah. or download and everyone watched it. And then all of a sudden these guys come here for a visit. We're up. like, wait, what? That's awesome. And well, I can tell you, to- well, we were at camp Arif John in Kuwait, right? Yeah. At that okay. point. So, I can tell you right now, Crixus and Spartacus, the two actors that play those two guys, could have um, laid down every single girl on that <laughs> fucking base. Like every single female soldier was like embarrassingly fucking drooling over these. Dudes. Oh yeah, it was insane. Yeah, like what an it was un- obvious. It was crazy. They were Glad living that. The they were living that gladiator movie. life in real life. <laughs> it's what was gladiator on. movies, you know, Spartan movies. I think those are the best ones to watch too. Fuck yeah. Hell yeah. Number two, Mike, what do you got? Best Italian dish. Whoa. Put me on the spot. Uh, maybe, uh, you know, maybe, uh, so maybe spaghetti with clams. Spaghetti con le vongole. You know, like, that's, I'm a sucker for that. Spaghetti with clams. Is that is with a red sauce or a, a, a white sauce? Just, uh, just pretty much the clam sauce. So the, the way that my dad does it, that comes out so good is he takes the pasta. Obviously, you want to use fresh pasta. Takes the pasta um, out of the boiling water and boils it in the water that the clams you know uh, that the clams give out, like as you're cooking the clams. So it gets very very creamy, almost as if there's an actual sauce, but it's really just like clam water. Um, wow. And it, you know, it, it's. I don't even want to talk about it right now. I'm getting hungry. Uh, right. so, <laughs> moving nah, on. Right. Next question. Next question. Next question. Next question. Favorite Italian slang word? Uh. <laughs> like a stunata, huh? Oh, man. Uh, which is like, me? all right. So I don't know if you guys know, but, but mechanics, you know, every time that we hit something, it's always an instinct to like curse and say, fuck, you know, like anything. And that's always the one that flies out of my mouth because when I was, whenever I was a kid and I'd be following my dad around and I'd always be with him whenever he was working on a boat or working on a car or doing anything and he would hit his head, he would always be like, Limo tachi do I? Like, be pissed off. So every time I get mad, now that's what I say. And sometimes my guys at the shop, they look at me and they're like, boss, what'd you say? And I'm like, nothing, man. Don't worry about it. Just go back to you. <laughs> so probably that. It just means God damn you. God damn okay. it. Okay. But it's you- like, you know. Yeah, I love it. I mean, do you know that we do a student out of the week on this show? Yep. Oh, we no do, kidding. Yeah, we, we do, do segment, that. We, yeah. We, uh, we, we usually come up with four of the biggest fucking idiots that we could find on the internet that week. And then we, we nominate them. I will nominate four student outs of the week. And then Mike will decide which one is the biggest fucking student out of all of them. Yeah. Yeah. I'm working on some t-shirts. Some I hope t-shirts. I'm not on the list, by the way. No, no. you haven't been. But you you, the guy you talked about earlier tonight has yeah. been on the list a few times actually no one time yeah. one time one time yeah because he went to somebody's house and beat them up but then no no afterwards... no, 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 no no not that not i was gonna say one. not yuli not oh, yuli i'm talking about mike you're, perry you're talking about mike perry yeah because yeah. perry's been on there you can't perry, have a, yeah but morons without oh that you guy. know what we did we did we put yuli on boy, there before he was it... not he was not the student out of the week but no. we did say we said yuli you can't be going to internet trolls houses and beating Don't people up that is a stunad move. You're uh, on the list, but you did not get know. named. Don't He's kill a us for doing that. I think yeah. that you know what? Part. After we after we heard the whole story, yeah, I I recant that fucking nomination. Yeah, because he is that a, was some legendary but, shit. I will say that. Listen, people do it all the fucking time, and it's getting <laughs> old. Man. People just sit there and say foul shit, and every once in a while, to know that we got some street justice. Yeah, you know, feel good. You know what I hate about it though is is because these assholes say whatever they want, then when you know, and I hope that it, this isn't the case, but you know exactly what that person's thinking as soon as he gets to their house and hits them. Now I'm going to sue you because of now course. not only does he 
he gets to say whatever he wants online and not reap the fucking, you know, the benefits of it, a nice swift punch to the face. But then he gets to in turn now sue the person. And, and that's the worst part of it. You know, you can just say whatever you want and then turn around and sue somebody. And it's, it's, it just pisses me off, you know? Unfortunately, so. there was a lot of light on this one. Yeah. But you know, we're talking about it as if you just went to this guy's house, you know, and punched him in the face, but maybe right, you right. back, back take a transaction offer up and the guy just came out and looked to be hostile and just, you just popped him. you know, it could have been that's a what... common misconception. You know, we don't know. That's, I the, think that's what happened. That's for the jury to decide. You know, right. you know? see when we read it, when we read it on the first article and we were like, man, that's a dumb move going to a fucking internet trolls house and just smacking a dude around. But then we got the whole story and we're like, Oh, all right. That's the thing, you, you, you're at least kind of fucking gangster for that shit. They're the first ones to fucking go and, and, and call the cops as soon as something happens. And then that's mm -hmm. the reason why they're on the internet doing it, because otherwise they would be doing exactly what me and you were doing it. You know, if they, <laughs> yeah, were, yeah. if they genuinely felt some type of way about the way that you, you know, were doing things or about how you fought and this and that, well, great, buddy. Why don't you come in my, my field and prove it? That's, you know? Yeah, buddy, you know where my shop is. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know where I'm working every single day. You can come see yeah. me. Well, that's yeah. why you know the 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 person in question earlier is such a fucking retard because we're not only in the same promotion, we're in the same weight class too. You fucking moron! So if you really had it, what I did, or stuff, <laughs> you know. But, oh man, I love it. Number four on the speed round. Here we go. <laughs> what is something you love to do as a kid that you still love to do now? I love skiing. I love fucking skiing. I, it's my favorite thing to do. Last year, I went like three times. This year, I didn't get to go once because I actually was supposed to go right after the Boswick fight. And then, you know, it was just, it was too busy at work with me taking those last couple weeks off. And then, you know, my hands were fucking balloons after the Boswick fight. So I also, you know, had that as a handicap. I was, dude, I, I, I can't leave right now, man. It's just going to take too much from me. Where's your, where's your favorite spot to go skiing? So I, my favorite spot to go skiing is actually where I grew up skiing at, which was uh, Silva Gardena. The first time that I went there, I was a year and four months old. I was 16 months old. That was the first time that I was on skis. And that's where the Olympics, that's where I competed when I was a kid. And that's where my families went. That's like five hours north of Rome. Um, and that's on the border of Austria and Rome, or sorry, Austria and Italy. And that's on the Alps. So I love it there because you could literally be skiing for hours and not even touch a ski lift. I mean, you can literally travel skiing where – here, I feel like even though the Rockies are probably the best mountains in the world, um, I feel like the way that they have it set up, you kind of have to like ski down a slope and then get on a ski lift and then ski down a slope. But they're all relatively short slopes. Even the blacks, you know, even like, you know, the more aggressive ones, which, of course, are supposed to be shorter because they're steeper. Even yeah. those slopes are, uh, you know, it, it just doesn't feel the same as it does over there. But I love skiing everywhere, man. I love Colorado. I love Lake Tahoe, even though Lake Tahoe was very uh, – you know, beginner compared to Colorado and Italy, but my favorite place to ski is definitely uh, Selva. Which is, yeah. Yep, yep. You ever you ever get injured on the mountain? Fuck yeah, dude! I, I had like serious injury though, like like tore something or anything like that. Yeah, I, I had a MCL injury, like a pretty bad MCL injury. I was actually on a park in um, fuck snowshoe, West Virginia. <laughs> and uh, I tore, I was actually on a rail and somebody wiped out at the red, like very far end of the rail, but I didn't notice it. And like an idiot, I fucking did this jump, landed on a fucking rail. Like, and then this guy wiped out at the very end. So for me to not hit him, I had to jump off and I ended up twisting my MCO. Ooh. So I had a pretty bad injury from that, but I'm like, dude, I'm like trip, I can't stop skiing. So what I did is I ended up getting a needle, draining it out and then skiing the next day. And funny enough, last year, right before I went to go ski, in uh, Lake Tahoe, I actually fucking tore my MCL again. It was a minor tear. It wasn't as serious, but I was still kind of limping around, and I went skiing the whole week with that. So I'm, I'm glad that I get to go ski on one knee. I can tell you right now, I uh, I never skied in my entire life until I met my wife, and she took me skiing. I started skiing at like 27 years old, and I had a fucking blast doing it. But... um about five years oh shit might have been 10 years ago now i haven't skied in so long i i tore my acl and my meniscus on a double diamond trying to like show up my father-in-law like a dickhead <laughs> that, that ended up bad huh <laughs> yeah it ended up bad you know what it was i hit a fucking sheet of ice and uh and i went like 
two, three hundred meters down the fucking three, two hundred yards down the mountain, just tumbling and fucking falling. I felt it pop. I thought my leg broke. You know, they, they call it a yard sale. You know, and fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. everything went, went everywhere. And I was like, man, pretty sure I broke my leg. But then I got there and like there was nothing broken. But I definitely I'm, I didn't start skiing when I was 16 months old. I guess that's the moral of the story there. If I started early, I would have been a little bit better, I guess. After the fight, come up to me. I'll show you something that happened to me when I was skiing. There you go. All right. We'll talk. Travis we'll talk. Thompson is worried about you. <laughs> so stop skiing until you're done fighting. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real, man. You're you're hurting yourself while you're fighting. Jesus Christ, man. Last question for you. Here we go. What's a song? We've been asking this to everybody this week. What's a song that you know every single word to, but you'd be embarrassed if everybody knew about it? Pride Party in the USA from Miley Cyrus. I just- <laughs> He said that this morning. No, I didn't. I said, I said, call oh, me you said, maybe. Call me maybe, Carly Ray Jackson. Call me maybe. That's right. Damn, man, that's a good one. <laughs> you know, right? you, pro- that you, pro- you probably know all the words to that one too, right? Hey, I just met you, and this is crazy. <laughs> there was actually a team that I remember that call me maybe thing. There was a uh, an Arab guy, and it, it's funny because his name tag was like with a K A L, but it was call me maybe. So. It was- <laughs> <laughs> that hey, I just met you, and then it was a picture of this guy. Colin, maybe. <laughs> you know what? And the Miami Dolphins, do you guys remember this? The Miami Dolphins remade the Carly Ray Je- uh, Carly Ray Jepsen video. If you go on YouTube and look up Call Me Maybe Miami Dolphins, it's like all these big muscle bound football players, and they fucking redid that whole video, <laughs> mouthing her shit, and it's yeah. absolutely hysterical. Yeah, it's fucking great. I got a good one. How What's about uh, Summer Girls by LFO? Remember that song? No, I... You remember New, New Kids on the Block had a bunch of hits, Chinese Food Makes Me oh, Sick? Oh, I know. Remember that asked. one? No shit. It was no, back no. in the 90s. Uh, you know yeah. what? Sing, sing it for it. Sing, sing us a little more, man. I like girls that wear Abercrombie and Fitch. I think if I had one wish. Sick. Remember that shit? <laughs> <laughs> that shit was so dumb. It's funny because now that we're saying songs that we know all the words to, you know, as soon as we don't remember the song, you got to sing a little bit more. So yeah, yeah. Call your bluff. Uh, it, it's a funny ass. Oh, dude, guys, I asked this question to my wife tonight, right? So I'm like, hey, Amy, uh, I'm gonna ask um, Francisco Re- uh, Ricky and Luis Palomino that question tonight. What, what what's the song that you remember? She goes, oh, you know what it is, and it's embarrassing that I even know all the words, and I'm like. What is it? And she's like, think about it. And I'm like thinking, like, what the fuck would embarrass my wife? My wife is not embarrassed very easy. And I'm like, my neck, my back. Oh my she god. Goes, and she goes, Nope. Think, think. And I and I go, put it in, but just put it in my mouth. Uh, just put it in my mouth. <laughs> in my motherfucking mouth. By Akinelli. You remember that song? Just put it in your mouth. Oh man, I'm like, you know all the fucking words in that song. No, she goes, <laughs> she goes, Dude, me and all man. Like right now, I think that uh we're not thinking of a lot of them, but I don't know if you remember back in high school, like there used to be a lot of like really fucked up songs that just kind of you know um flew under the radar because we were kids, we thought that it was so funny, but then you listen to it when you were adults and you were just like, Holy shit, man, I can't believe that they were saying what they were saying. Yep. Oh so, yeah. That'd you be one of them. You know a song I uh know every single word to and i'm not embarrassed about wonder wall by fucking oasis, oasis. yeah, Fuck yeah dude. I, used to, I used to sing that shit all the time i said maybe i used to even try to put a fucking uh a british <laughs> yeah, you accent think you're british right. you gotta be the one that saves me i used to do that shit all the time and i love it kyle's a star in his truck yeah fuck you mike <laughs> <laughs> anyways dude this is <laughs> no when we were when we were overseas man remember the fucking so we had like a, a regular army chow hall on one side of the base then we had like a tent chow hall in one other zone in the base but then there was like a, a like a haji one right the like the the yeah zone Kuwaitis one. ran it the zone one mm-hmm. it was called the oasis right and we used to drive over to the Oasis Chow Hall, and just to piss off everybody in my truck, I'd be like, I said, maybe you're going to be the one that saves me. And they'd be like, would you shut the fuck up? It's Mongolian Fridays. 
<laughs> Anyways, man, it's been fucking awesome talking to you. I cannot believe the heat between you and the guy you're not fighting next week. We're excited about your fight with you, Lee, next week. It, it's yep. like so much going on with you right now. We thank you for coming on the show. We'll give you one more uh, minute to uh, shout a few things out and maybe give us a final prediction on your fight with your boy, Yuli Diaz. Thanks, fellas. Um, I feel like when I gave uh, when I gave everybody a prediction that I was going to be performance of the night, I ended up getting fight of the night. So maybe not if I say fight of the night, I might get performance of the night. So I predict fight of the night between me and Yuli. And uh, shout outs, yeah, man. Shout out to uh, everybody that uh, sponsored me. You know, New View Roofing, Twenty Seven Bar and Lounge, uh, Speed and Truck World, uh, Florida Man Sells. So every, everybody, you know, my team, Freedom Fighters, Delray Beach Boxing. And see everybody next week on Wednesday at the press conference. Hell yeah, everybody tune in. Do not miss this one. Francisco Ricky versus Yuli the Monster Diaz, co-main event, interim middleweight champion. Thank you very much for coming on the show, Mike. You got anything else? Yeah, I got one more thing. Pick yourself up a shirt. Do you have shirts left? There we go. Of course I do. Still got about 84 or 85 left. Nice. I love Where do you it. get them? Right on your Instagram? Is there a link on your Instagram? Yep. Right? Or just DM me. And uh, right, th those are the shirts that I have on me because it's easier to deliver them for the fight so they don't have to wait for shipping. And uh, DM me. And then uh, I take anything. Cash App, Zell, Venmo. So it's 20 bucks per shirt. And if you get a VIP ticket from me, you get a free shirt. There it is. Everybody, his social medias are right at the bottom there. Give him a follow. DM him. Buy his shirt. And tune in on June 24th. We'll be there. Cannot wait to see it. Thank you very much for coming on the show, man. We'll see you soon. Thank you, my brother. I'll see you guys right. next week. All right. All right. Take it easy. You too, buddy. Bye. Right. Hey, -o. hey, -o. hey, -o. oh, hi, oh, <laughs> oh, hi, oh, uh, dude. Wow. Holy shit, dude. The, the heat between that guy and, um, and Mike Perry is as real as it gets, huh? Holy oh, fuck. Oh, yeah. It definitely is. They, they cannot do. not make that fight. I don't they give have a to. Fuck. They oh. have to. I get there's some, like, scheme here, grand scheme of things. We've got the MVP thing that we didn't know was going on. But, I mean, this has to happen at some point. I mean, come on. Dude, Let's when, do it. When he said, I know they didn't want to book it because I'd fucking murder him. <laughs> man. I was like, oh, boy. Holy shit, man. That shit is real as fuck. I'll tell you. Man, um, unbelievable. Thank you very much. We had two amazing guests tonight. Luis yeah. Palomino, always a great conversation. And Frank, Ricky. Right. Ricky. Ricky. Hey, Ricky. we do have an announcement to make, right, about tomorrow. Oh. Hey, can I do it? Can I do the breaking news? Yeah, go ahead. Do -do -do -do. Do -do -do. <laughs> Yuli Diaz is going to be on the show. We are we are going to have a special Friday edition of the Mike and Miss show. Yeah. Tomorrow night, Mike, we doing correct. it at 8 o'clock or 8.30? 8.30. tomorrow Easter. night. We will have the other half of that co-main event fight. Yuli, the monster Diaz, will be on with us tomorrow night. Special Hell yeah. Friday night edition. Wait, baby. man. I'm so happy. Here we go. We've been That's trying to get great. Yuli on here for a long time. We've talked to him a few times at events, but he's a really hard man to get a hold of. He's yeah, he's hanging with Mark Anthony and DJ Khaled and fucking Pitbull and all these yeah. goddamn guys. He took time out of his very important, busy, exciting life to talk to a couple of stunads. Yeah, a couple huh? of stunads, a couple of stunads from the northeast get to talk to Yuli Diaz tomorrow night. Right. So, guys, you're not done with us yet this week. We've had a fucking hell of a week. We had Elvin Brito. We had Britton Beltran. We had Luis Palomino. We had Francisco Ricky. And now we will have Yuli Diaz tomorrow night, 8.30 p.m. Make sure you're tuned in. Thank you guys for tuning in. Mike, you got anything else for these people or what? Peace.